Last year, one of our most popular videos was on the Lenovo Flex 5 with the Ryzen 5 4500U. And today, we're doing a follow-up with the Lenovo Flex 5 with the Ryzen 7 5700U. This is the upgraded version with the latest in AMD's process technology. What's that? Oh no, this is Zen 2 instead of Zen 3 because AMD made it really confusing where the 5800U is Zen 3, but the 5700U is Zen 2, but then the 5600U is Zen 3, but then the 5500U is Zen 2? Oh, okay, well, I guess let's talk about this laptop. I do wanna let you know that today's video on the Flex 5 is sponsored by Omaze. If you go to omaze.com forward slash UFD tech, you can be entered for your chance to win a custom Tesla Model S and win $20,000 in cash and also donate to some amazing charities. But we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Cause that's kind of the general gist of this entire experience that I've had with the Flex 5. I guess it's an improvement, but it's also not necessarily better in all regards than the previous version that came out. For the most part, it's pretty identical in spec besides the actual chip itself. It's a Ryzen 7 5700U, 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 RAM, which is soldered to the board, non-upgradable, 512 gig SSD with that Vega integrated graphics, a 15.6 inch 1080p, 250 nits brightness touch screen panel, and then that 360 degree hinge that turns it into a two-in-one. Now I was only able to pick up the 15.6 inch because the 14 inch wasn't available anywhere where I found it. I can only buy this on Newegg for the price of $800, which is kind of pricey, especially for some of the compromises that Lenovo made on this laptop, which kind of play into the idea that this is just a mild upgrade to the previous generation. The Flex 5 is a solid laptop overall, but it lacks the excitement of the initial Flex 5 4000 series because that was such a major leap in process technology because this is still on the same process technology. The benchmarks actually are good, but they're not record shattering like a Ryzen 5000 chip might have you believe it would be. All of those specs make this a really solid contender, and especially with me coming off reviewing the Surface Laptop 4, it definitely shines in a lot of key areas. But what's not a mix of good and bad is today's video sponsor, Omaze. It's all good, my friends. Today's video sponsor, Omaze, is giving away an incredible prize, a custom Tesla Model S and $20,000. And the best part is that you can do this while supporting charities as well. Before we talk about the prize, let's talk about the charities that you'll be helping through Omaze. 501c3, which helps to seek to mobilize the next generation to fight climate change by creating a global community that embraces low carbon culture. 501c3 intersects innovation and storytelling to bring attention to solutions that can help build a cleaner, more sustainable, and more hopeful future. And Give Power is the second charity that you can help support, which is on a mission to help the roughly 2.2 billion people around the world who do not have access to safely managed drinking water. The nonprofit uses its deep solar expertise to power and provide clean water food security, and light to regions in need around the world. So you can donate $10 and be entered for your chance to win that custom Tesla Model S and that $20,000. The Tesla Model S is custom built by Unplugged Performance to be the most unique and high quality Tesla there is. It's got all the standard Tesla features that you're expecting, like the instant torque from the electric motor, zero to 60 in 2.3 seconds, 348 mile range, but it also has the S Apex carbon fiber wide body kit, as well as the Unplugged UP03 wheels with amazing gray Engraving, sports dynamic air suspension lowering kit, carbon fiber rear deck lid spoiler. This thing is packed to the gills. I love my Model 3. To see a Model S that's tricked out like this gets me even more excited. And again, you can check out our link in the video description, omaze.com forward slash UFD tech to enter for your chance to win those amazing prizes and donate to the charities as well. So let's start off with battery life because this is something that's majorly improved from the previous Flex 5. With the 52.5 watt hour battery, I was able to get near nearly nine hours of active use on this device, which is up 52% from the previous device, which has the same capacity battery. And at the time, I was incredibly impressed by its six hours. Overall, this new Flex 5 definitely kills it in the battery department. Lenovo quotes up to 10 hours, and we got really, really close to that. Also, let's talk about the CPU that's in here, because I know that I kind of begrudgingly referenced the fact that it's only Zen 2, but it still performs better than the Ryzen 4000U series 
these laptops that I've tested out. And things like Cinebench R15, I managed 20% better on multi-core score versus the six core 4500U. But on the Cinebench R23, we were 12% faster on single core and 53% faster on the multi-core, which is a great improvement considering this thing only has 33% more cores. So if it's getting a 50% improvement, that means it's actually going above and beyond its core spec thanks to that 12% faster single core score. And when you combine that CPU with the integrated Vega graphics that's in here, you actually have a pretty decent machine for 1080p low gaming. And things like Red Dead Redemption 2, I got 21.7 FPS, which I know doesn't sound like a lot. It's below the 30 threshold that a lot of people want it at. However, it was stable. And that's really all that you need, especially if you're gonna take something like this to college, it's gonna perform pretty decently, even in AAA games. Metro Exodus, we got 33.8 FPS. In more esports titles like Fortnite and Valorant, we got 93.7 and 110.9 FPS respectively, which are again, solid numbers. And more professional applications like Premiere Pro, I have a set benchmark that I like to run with a 1080p YouTube encoding that I do. And this was able to do it in four minutes and eight seconds, which is 5% faster than the Surface Laptops 4 Ryzen 5 could do it. So it's actually not a huge improvement considering the fact that this has two more cores as well as it has two more compute units in the GPU versus the Ryzen 5, but it's faster, just not tremendously so. But the thing stays relatively cool, got 72 degrees Celsius while doing all of the testing and it doesn't actually ramp up that heavily to become annoying. Here's a quick sound test for you. So this thing does really well in CPU tests. It almost hits Tiger Lake's single core performance while beating out on the multi-core quite heavily. It's 52% faster than the Surface Laptop 4's Ryzen 5 chip and 64% faster than the previous Lenovo Flex 5. This thing has been improved on the CPU side of things, even if it's not Zen 3. But the key areas that Lenovo didn't fix are the build quality, which is still quite flexy in the chassis. That hinge quality is not really designed for 15.6 inches, it just flops all around. The screen wobbles when I touch it. It's not very sturdy. They didn't improve the speakers, which are a two by two watt Dolby stereo setup. It's mushy in the mids. There's no bass response. It's clear. There's no rattle or distortion. It's essentially the same as the previous version. But the worst thing about the previous Lenovo Flex 5, and also the worst thing about this one that they didn't improve is, I don't know if you can see that, but you can't really see the screen. This thing's at max brightness. It only gets up to 250 nits, and that's not even the worst part. It lacks in brightness, but it also lacks in color representation, only coming in with 54% of sRGB. Now, this likely won't matter to you if you're just using it for things in college or just more on the data entry side of things, but if you're using it for any sort of professional work, it's gonna be a non-starter from there. And forget taking it outside because, again, that 250 nits brightness won't be enough, especially Actually, even in a partially lit office, you can't even see the screen all that well from the camera. They chose not to upgrade it for this version, which I guess because of the price point, the market segment that they're aiming at, it's not a necessity, but it's definitely the weakest part about this entire laptop experience. They did, however, make slight improvements to the webcam and mic. The webcam and microphones are acceptable. I mean, in the age of Zoom, I'm, I've seen so many things that are worse. The video quality is better than the previous Flex 5 and the audio audio is it's not peaking like the last one did but it's also it's just not good it's like there's too much audio processing going on where they're just making it sound like it's underwater it's not great it'll work you'll be the average of the zoom call and what's also exactly the same is the io on the left hand side you got the power in the hdmi 1.4 b out usb c and then a headset jack and on the right side you've got two usb 3.2 ports as well as an sd card reader and a power button however to note just like the previous flex 5 at least here in the US, that power adapter is useless because they ship the charger with it as a USB type C charger. And considering you only have one type C port, you either use it as USB or you have to power a device. It's an either or situation. Overall, it's impressive 
enough. Again, it's not really the next generation exciting leap forward with the Ryzen 5000U series. AMD has made it confusing by making it so that you have to switch between Zen 2 and Zen 3, depending on which laptop you're getting. This is only Zen 2. However, there are improvements that it is making over the Ryzen 4000U series. As I mentioned, it is 12% faster in single core versus the Ryzen 5 4000U series. It's over 60% faster than the previous 4500U. I never had a 4700U to compare directly against, but the single core improvements tell me that there are some efficiencies that AMD has made in the mobile version here. The GPU doesn't seem to be that much upgraded. It seems to be about roughly the same performance of what you could expect from a Ryzen 4000U series chip. So overall, it's a mixed bag, 800 bucks, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow, especially because they didn't include the stylus with this one, whereas they did with the previous Flex 5, which only cost $600 and came with an included stylus. This is $800 and doesn't include it. I could recommend that you pick up the Flex 5 if you are not concerned about color work in any regard whatsoever, and you actually don't need any sort of brightness if you're only staying indoors, and especially if you're using something like an external monitor hooked up to it, it can be a solid buy for you. But if you need any sort of color accuracy, you want to be able to use this outside, you probably should shop elsewhere. And if you're looking for the huge CPU and GPU improvement from AMD on this, you're going to have to give the 5700U a skip and maybe wait until 5800U laptops start popping up sometime soon. This is the first time I've seen a 5700U come onto the market. So I jumped on it, picked it up, we're reviewing it. Something that I also have incredibly mixed thoughts on is the Surface Laptop 4. You should check out our video that we did on it right over there. Microsoft's attempt at making a MacBook Air just didn't really work out. Don't forget to check out today's video sponsor, Omaze. Go to omaze.com forward slash UFD tech to potentially win that custom Tesla Model S and $20,000 in cash. I'll see you in the next video, friends. Cheers.